Hey guys, Conrad Craft here. Um, working on some projects right now, but I wanted to stop and uh, kind of address um, some comments that I've received in uh, some of my videos, specifically the chess video, uh, the one showing the five minute chess piece. Um, I've had some requests for people, uh, from people who want me to show how to do the whole process. And um, so what I want to do is start you with step one, and that is drawing or designing the chess pieces. So let me get this camera set up. All right. So one of the most essential things that you need is going to be just a graph uh, paper book, uh, some sort of sketchbook with graph lines on it. I like quarter inch graph paper and um, I use it for everything. I mean, I, I draw all my designs for tables and stuff like that for anything that I'm building. I have lists, I have all sorts of um, things that I use it for. So it's pretty, pretty crucial for me. All right, so what do we do whenever we're starting a chess set? Well, we have to kind of decide what the dimensions are going to be. The dimensions of a chess set are always determined by the board size and the king height. Um, so you, you either decide what size board you want or what size king you want to have on that board, and they relate uh, to each other. Uh, directly. The king is always twice whatever your square size is. So if you have like a uh, two inch square, you can have a four inch king and so on. So <clears throat> using the graph paper, that starts to make things really easy as far as design goes. For instance, I could start the base of a king uh, just by drawing out a line and go, all right, the top, that's my base, the top of the king is going to be four inches up from there. So one, two, three, four, that's one inch. One, two, three, four, two inches. One, two, three, four, three inches. One, two, three, four, four inches. Piece of cake. So there's the top. And I'm going to go ahead and draw a center line. Because we don't have to decide, we don't have to design the whole, like, piece. All we actually need to do using the process uh, that I showed in the video on making the five minute chess piece. All we have to do is um, design half of the piece. And when we turn the piece out of foam on the lathe, the uh, other half obviously is being turned, like, you know, that's how a lathe works. <clears throat> so we only need one profile. So what's the general shape of a king? We have some kind of finial up at the top. I'm going to draw um, kind of the classic finial. And to do that, we're just going to use a, like a cross design. So I'm going to go up two squares. We won't make it crazy tall. And I'm going to come up just above the center line, dividing those two squares. It's going to be kind of where my arms for the cross are. I'm going to come up just a little bit above that and then come down. And then down from there, the crown has a very uh, specific shape. So I'm going to start, and I'm just going to draw on one half of this king. I'll go ahead and I'll start on that side, I guess. <clears throat> so I could actually take these dimensions and go, all right, let's make the top, the crown, like really prominent. So let's take up this entire top inch for the crown. So the crown has a kind of a curve to the top and it's wider at the top than it is at the bottom of the crown. So I'm going to come out one quarter of an inch here and two quarters of an inch there. And we're just going to see what that looks like. Taper that in. Now if you can imagine having it paired on the other side and you come out two inches with a little bit of a curve, come out a quarter of an inch here, and if you were to mirror that, you start to see, okay, there's the top of the crown. Now the thing that you have to keep in mind is that your width is always double, right? We're only doing half, we're only doing a profile. So, you know, if I do a quarter of an inch here, that means the thickness of the neck right here under the crown is going to be half an inch. And that's a pretty good thickness. So uh, when you start turning something down really thin, um, then you, you need to pay attention uh, to your thicknesses. But, you know, we're going to keep things pretty wide just for a basic design video. All right. 
Now, all of the pieces that represent people on a chessboard generally have some sort of collar. So to draw the collar, I'm just going to do uh, a couple of, of ribs. And so I'm going to take this quarter inch piece here, I'm going to come halfway through it. There's about halfway through that quarter inch piece. I'll zoom in a little bit more. So right about here, halfway through, halfway through, we're going to come out with the first rib. Most collars have two ribs, so the second rib will take up the second half and it will come out a little bit further. It's pretty straightforward. All right, now the base of the crown and the top of the tapered part of the chest piece should be about the same dimension. So you just, wherever you stopped here, we're a quarter inch out from the center. That's where you need to start for the tapering out of the base. Now what about the width? How wide should it be? Well, if, if we want it to fit on a two inch square, then the base needs to be just under two inches. So that's pretty simple. We just need to stay under four of these little squares in either direction and then it'll fit on our two inch square. So I'm going to go uh, three and a half out each direction and that'll kind of give me uh, a, you know, a general stopping place for the width on the base. How thick do we want the base to be? Well, looking at the whole piece, um, you, can, you can get an idea of, of visual weight that is going to be implied by how big your base is. If your base is huge, the base has a ton of visual weight. So along with that visual weight kind of factor, let's, uh, we know that we have a full inch here. Let's go half of that. So half an inch is two squares up. We don't want our base really any bigger than that. And you start to see the visual weight implied. And then we just taper. Okay, so once you have your basic design like this, you can start adding more details. Like we didn't have to add the two collets up here at the top on the collar. Didn't have to add those two beads like that immediately. We could have done that later. But, you know, the basic shape already down, what we need now is some finer detail to make this thing more interesting. So I'm just going to refine some things. Like, this is a pretty straight line coming from just inside the outer edge of my base there. So what I want to do is I want to make a relief. I'm going to cut back right here just a little bit. So I'm going to go up a quarter of an inch and come down at a 45 degree angle a quarter of an inch. And that creates kind of the cutback uh, just before the base. And that adds a little bit of interest. And you know what? Since there's two of these beads up here on the top, I'm going to do uh, kind of something similar. Maybe I want my base to have uh, two large beads on it. <clears throat> so I'm going to start by kind of separating those beads from the other surfaces by chamfering the edges a little bit. And you just round over those corners. And create a center line. Well, you know what? I want the bottom one, I want the very bottom most one to be larger than the top one. So I'm going to come up, not at the halfway point, but like at the two-thirds kind of point. Like that. And I'm going to kind of round over. And then I'm going to make this one not only be smaller in thickness, but I also want to set it back, kind of like this one is set back from that one. So I'm going to I'm going to make this one start further back. Yeah. So you can kind of see as I follow this along back to the center point, 
you can kind of get the idea of what that's going to look like. So I have a, a large bead for the very base, and a slightly smaller bead uh, for that, just above it, my tapered up edge. And you know what? This, this line is too straight. I don't like that. What I want to do is maybe make it more elegant and take that uh, into a curve that tapers a little deeper, like has a wasting right in here. So, I'm just going to kind of pick where I want to, to go down to. And I'm not, like I said, any fancy kind of artist. I'm just going in and scribbling away and I'll come back and erase the lines I don't like. So it's got a little bit more form to it. It actually you can potentially come uh, closer into the center line than your junction point up here at the crown. Like, you know, we talked about how the base of the crown and the top of the neck need to meet, basically. Well, you can actually taper down from there to the thinnest part of the waistline on the, on the body here and taper out from there. Cool. So that's pretty much it for the king as far as creating the profile goes. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of skill to do that. And now the next step is just to uh, cut this off of this graph paper, glue it to a piece of cardboard with some CA glue, cyanoacrylate, and then um, take a razor and cut that profile that we just drew into that cardboard or you, know, you could use a harder material. You could use uh, a plastic material or, or even wood if you wanted to or metal uh, and cut this profile into it so you have a little bit more permanent kind of a form. But you know, I like using a razor uh, because it's quick. I like using the dense cardboard because it's cheap and easy to get a hold of. It doesn't take long to shape. So anyway, that's the king. Let's get on to the queen.